We were commenting before we started at the lack of gender diversity on this panel. Did you notice this? I wonder if there are any other sessions here that are all female. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, um, I'm Allison Labati, uh, and thank you, Heather, for pulling us all together. Um, we each represent a pretty different perspective and uh, position in the industry. Uh, and so I'm really interested to see where we go with this. We talked about just sharing a couple of um, ideas or initial thoughts to get us going. Uh, so I'll do that with you here, obviously, but um, quickly just a little bit about where I'm coming from so that I can discount anything I say to you that you say, that doesn't make sense. Um, uh, I work for John Wiley and Sons in our research publishing division. And I specifically work in the society services group, which um, means that we uh, contract with and publish peer-reviewed journals for um, society partners. So in my group, editorial means those who work with the editors in chief, the editorial boards. Um, we don't actually do that content work ourselves, um, but we work with them to help develop their products and, and grow their journals. Uh, Wiley is a very old company. We're over 200 years old. We've got about 5,000 employees around the world and 35 or so offices. So it's a very large organization which comes with all of its challenges and opportunities. Um, but what it means, I think, is that we've, you know, over time, obviously, in, in business, we've built up these artificial structures sales and editorial being one of those or two of those. Um, and a, I think a big challenge for us in our current market climate is kind of breaking down those traditional silos and ensuring that we're all working toward the same goal. Because whoever said that we need to continue these tracks of sales and editorial, what, is it, what does it mean these days? Um, I would suggest that it doesn't have as much relevance as it used to and perhaps needed to have at a certain point. Um, so the, the one sort of thing I want to, I bet you don't know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> uh, the one sort of thing I wanted to just throw out there um, and see if we come back to it in discussion is around this idea of relationships. When I was thinking about where I've seen the most success with editorial and sales collaboration, whether it's when um, the groups you know, sort of don't exist in the traditional hierarchies or uh, whether colleagues are sort of breaking down these traditional barriers is when uh, people have conversations. So uh, Jesse and Vita both alluded to this in their comments just now about when you've got someone in sales and someone in editorial realizing that they've got a common problem or um, a common need, something that they both want to solve. Um, talking about those two things and then finding the solution for it together is where I've seen in the companies I've worked for the greatest success and the most interesting products uh, arising from them. So I work in uh, medical, the medical side of publishing, um, and a huge portion of medical progress to say today is facilitated by industry pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, and most of them are for-profit, which means they need to make a buck. A lot of their decisions about research and um, development are informed by, by that. Uh, but what's been really interesting is when one of our sales reps goes and speaks to J&J &J or Pfizer or Ortho, whoever it is, and they hear the sales rep there talking about the problems that they've got, they come back and talk to our editors in chief or the publishers um, or at an editorial board meeting and saying, well, they, you know, this group is really concerned about the fact that they're not able to share um, objective peer reviewed content on a particular topic with their clinician audience. And that might get the EIC saying, well, that's interesting because I've been looking for that kind of resource myself. Is there some way that we can work together to make sure that we're fulfilling, fulfilling that need? Um, we've got uh, a product at my company 
that started from exactly those origins about seven, eight years ago. Uh, it's been funded by Pharma. All the content is completely independent. The readers love it. We get great usage, great feedback, uh, great anecdotal evidence of its value. Um, and it's brought in a tremendous amount of revenue to that society to help support and build their other uh, programs. So again, I kind of bring it back to the fact that these conversations, these relationships between sales and editorial colleagues are what I have seen generate some of the really interesting uh, solutions. And that's what I'll leave you with before we go to Kathleen. <laughs>